what I love most about acting is the pretend mm. part, you know, it's being a kid. I like to like pretend I'm someone else and and as a guy, I want to like, sometimes I want to play war still, you know, and a 32 year old boy wanted to play war, but I, it's great. They give you the gun and then they're like, run here, run there, and there's going to be explosions all around you. I'm like, this could not be better. A new world will be born from the blood of the old. Courage to burst from our cages and set ourselves free or die in the attempt. Uh, did you have kind of like pinch me moments that I'm getting paid to do this? in those scenes. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I didn't want it to end, or like, you know, the day would be coming to an end and I didn't want it to stop. And um, a lot of ways, a lot of ways this film was like that for me. You know, I didn't want the days to end. I really liked it. I really liked working with Roland and the other actors are great. And it was great and challenging and interesting to play a character who had cathartic moments in almost every scene he's in, you know, very challenge, you know, very dramatic moments and, um, and you know, creates for drama in the film. And it's difficult sometimes because you're, um, you know, all the scenes are so heavy. Father, they started killing priests. We have to leave. It's suicide to stay. What was the most challenging aspect for you? Because I, uh, there's so much that you have to do in this movie. So much is thrown at you. What was what was the most challenging? Um, you know, I. Everything was challenging on this film, uh, in my life and in, in shooting the film and the character. The most challenging was playing Manolo as an old man. There's a lot of body work that goes into it. There's the makeup that's there, but to really compliment it, I need to work on the body work um, and stuff. And, um, and also the sound of his voice had to be different. It was also the first five days of shooting, so that made it an extra challenge. And uh, I, I did something I never do um, and never have done but uh, it was also with Roland kind of pushing this along because I stayed in character all day and the crew referred to me as Mr. Torres and uh, they treated it like they were shooting a documentary in the house and um, gave me no place to go. I couldn't, couldn't be me really at all. So I, and it was really working well for me and um, it was great. I mean, by the fourth day I was cracking a little and I started Joke around, you know, joke around like I was a dirty old man. I thought that was kind of fun to do. <laughs> I wanted to like ride by a bunch of kids like on a skateboard in the hospital gown and the old man makeup, just like, like no, I don't like yeah, watch this. <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't do that. Your father is a product of difficult times. You should try to understand him. Sociologically speaking, and religion, it's so complex what was going on then. Yeah. It's really hard to find a good guy and to find a bad guy. Yeah. That's it's a lot like life. I mean, it's like, you know, we like to try to find the black and white of things, but, you know, human beings are human beings, and it, for the most part, as awful as the things that someone might do, most of the time they, they have remorse. You know, whatever face they're putting on, it's rare when they don't find remorse. And when they don't, we, we realize there's serial killers or there's something seriously, seriously wrong with them that's different. I know what it is to be angry at life. Please be careful where that leads you, Manon. Not one of us is free from human weakness. It was hard to figure out which side he was on and what he was really feeling. How did you reconcile all of that in your head? It was easy because he didn't know. As is often with people who have a lot of bravado and really puff their chest out and say they believe in something so firmly, it's actually most of the time because they don't know what they believe and they're just trying to be something. And Manolo wanted so badly to be something. I mean, he wanted to be his dad or he wanted to be Jose Maria and then he wanted to be Oriol. He wanted to not just be a spy but a captain in the army and he was none of these things and um, sadly he'll, he never would have known that, you know. I didn't know whose side I was on anymore. Poverty is contagious. Poverty is contagious. Which I thought was, yeah. I don't think I've ever heard that put that way before. It's a great, it's yeah, a great line. It's a great line. Yeah, Ron's a great writer. People that are poor, you basically tell them that they're sick and that they, they'll infect you with their poorness if you don't stay away from them. And then, of course, the, with a little boy's mind, you, like the movie says, you plant many seeds and um, sometimes unintentionally, but you never know which one's gonna take off and that that's the one that took off in Manolo's heart that the, the line you know that he wanted to stay away from he wanted to be prestigious and, and strong and rich and so he thought he had to like steer clear of, of Jose Maria and um, that's where the split happens you know and then that's where we see the two sides of the same point we could see where Jose Maria could have gone it was the same time period he could have done the same things and made the same choices but he didn't he maintained 
his call, he maintained the, the faith he had in his calling throughout a bloody uh, divisive war. So what's what's next for you? Uh, I, I am doing uh, a film called Gone with Heitor Dahlia um, uh, directing and Amanda Seyfried as a star. And there's another one I don't know if I can say it, but I would love to, but I don't think I can say it. Will, will we see you back in uh, back on a battlefield? Any more action movies coming I, your way? You think? I love that. I don't know. Let's see. You know, I love I love those kind of movies and I like period movies. So maybe go maybe go the superhero route at some point. I don't know. Let's see about that.